Hey, Physics 30s, so we're going to go over our models of the atom practice questions here. Uh, I'll just talk about J.J. Thompson's experiment. I'll talk about Dalton. Uh, Dalton, you just have to know that he just developed the plum pudding model. And everything was indivisible. And then J.J. Thompson comes along and does an experiment regarding with the cathode ray tubes. And what experimental result did it include that all cathode rays consist of the identical particles? So the result that he found was that no matter, ooh, maybe I should change this into a pen. No matter what cathode, oh, I should call cathode correctly, probably. Was used the charge to mass ratio was always the same. Awesome. Okay. That was pretty easy. Not too bad. All right. So remember, you had a three step process. So the first step is that you accelerated those charged particles. Uh, through potential difference. We're not too concerned about that part. All these particles are now going all different speeds now. And then what he did, he took those particles that are all going different speeds, passed them through another system that had a magnetic and a, uh, electric field in it. And the uh, particles would s be selected based on their speed. So the ones that are undeflected would have a very specific speed. So in part A, let's just imagine we have an electron traveling this way, okay? Now, there's going to be two ways to draw this picture. You could draw the picture um, with the magnetic field going into the page or the magnetic field coming out of the page. I'm going to draw the magnetic field coming going into the page. Actually, you know what? I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to draw it coming out of the page. I'll write this down here, out of the page. Probably could use a smaller pen here. Now, because it's coming out of the page, I'm going to have to use my hand rule to figure out which direction the magnetic field is going. So I'm going to use my left hand, put my thumb in the direction of the particle. My fingers are coming out of the page. Uh, yeah, I'm going to flip it around here a little bit. Uh, but it looks like my magnetic force is going upwards because of this orientation. And my magnetic force is going upwards. I need something to pull it downwards. So that means there's going to be a positive plate on the bottom. Okay, and the negative plate on the top. Okay, so now the electric field is going to have to be going this direction. So the red line here, those are my electric fields. Okay? Remember, the electric field is always going to be from positive to negative. Even though the electron is being forced downwards, the electric field is which way a positive charged particle would move. Uh, if you made the field go into the page instead for the magnetic field, the field lines, the other field lines would be going downwards. Okay, so for part B, we want to know what speed this is going. So we have these two forces. In my case, we have a force, magnetic force going upwards. We have an electric force going downwards. And what I know is that these two forces, just the magnitudes, should be equal to each other if I'm going to be undeflected. So QVB and EQ, like we had before, absolute valued. Uh, this should be absolute valued too. Okay, and then my speed is just going to be E divided by B. Because my Qs are going to cancel out. So it really doesn't matter if this is an electron or not. But we know there's an electron, right? Mm, yeah, we know it's an electron. What am I going to look for? Oh, yeah, I'm looking for my calculator. That's what I was looking for. Do, 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 do. We got 100,000 divided by 0 0.025. So we get about 4 
million. So four times, oh, I should probably put sig digs here, three sig digs, 4.00 times 10 to the six meters per second. It's quite fast. Okay. Now the charged particles in this question are now going to be going through uh, a different part, the third part, in which they just pass through a magnetic field and then they curve. So the magnetic force in this case now is going to cause a centripetal force. So I got my QVB like we had before. Now we got the MV squared over R part. Uh, one of my V's is going to cancel out. I'm just going to do that right now. And this is what we have here. Okay. Determine the charge to mass ratio of these particles. Okay. So I'm just going to rearrange this formula for charge over mass. So the charge is going to stay on this side, on the left side. I'm going to divide the B down to the other side to be beside the R there. I'm going to leave the mass, oops, sorry. I divided the mass down. I'm going to leave the speed up on the top. So we got the 4 times 10 to the 6 from the previous question. We got the magnetic field of 569 micro Teslas. And we got a radius of 0 0.04. Cool. Let's see what we have here. Five sixty-nine micro Teslas. So I'm going to change that into regular Teslas, and I'm also going to divide by the point zero four, and we get a two point three one times ten to the eleven coulombs. Okay. Times ten to eleven. Kind of tips me off that these are probably correct. Uh, let me just double check if I did my math up here correctly. The number just seems a little bit off. It's a, it's a little bit higher than the charge mass ratio of an electron. It doesn't really say anything about it being an electron. So I'm just going to assume that it was. But it's not. Oh, the number's close to being an electron. Maybe it's just an experimental error. It ends up being pretty. Oh, that's why I'm a little bit off. Huh. I can see what I did up here. So the number is actually not this number. Let me just uh, fix that. Probably going to be able to close, closer to electron. I put down a 469 rather than a 569. Hey, look at that. 1.76. And that's a bit closer to electrons charge mass ratio. Okay. I'll see you in the next video.